In the headlines, existential issues remain at the center of great Ethiopian diaspora homecoming challenge. Addis Ababa is safe contrary to Western media campaign against Ethiopia. Hello there, welcome to ETV News. I'm Grum Tariko. Ethiopian lawmakers have approved a bill to establish a commission for national dialogue which will pave the way for national consensus and keep the integrity of the country. Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed's government has promised to create such a commission for national dialogue to establish a common ground on contentious issues. The commission, however, will not at this stage engage with Tigray People's Liberation Front or the Oromo Liberation Army, both of which are fighting the federal army and have been declared terrorist organizations by the government. Some government officials have said specifically that the new commission will not be engaging in talks with TPLF. The government so far has a strict policy of no negotiations with the armed group. The Guardian Nigeria published yesterday an, an article under the title Why Ethiopia Must Not Fall Apart. The article meticulously paints a picture that the EU resolution is an embarrassing document that does not take into account the whole range of facts on the ground regarding the conflict in northern Ethiopia. Tigisternisa has more on this. The EU resolution primarily shows a wish of EU parliamentarians to score moral points wanting to be seen as concerned about the civilian population in Tigray suffering from food scarcity. That is of course legitimate. But they stopped there and did not consider the equal if not much worse suffering from both sides mass displacement food scarcity and gross violence that were seen in Afar and Amhara regions. Those watching the debate in the EU Parliament on this resolution saw a level of ignorance hard to swallow reflecting indeed a lingering neocolonial mindset of Europeans towards an independent African country that does not listen to the good-willing Europeans. An inquiry into the facts behind this decision of expelling UN personnel makes it clear that it was justified. Several UN officials were transgressing the mandate of their function assisting the TPLF insurgent leaders with several kinds of services, allegedly including in getting them advanced radar communication equipments. They floated the neutrality and professionalism that their job prescribes. I will start with a statement by the Secretary General on Ethiopia. I was shocked by the information that the government of Ethiopia has declared seven UN officials, including senior UN humanitarian officials, as persona non grata. The U.S. government condemns in the strongest possible terms the government of Ethiopia's unprecedented action to expel the leadership of all of the United Nations organizations involved in ongoing humanitarian operations. We agree with UN leaders. This is a stain on our collective conscience and it must stop. The reaction from the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres, the EU and of course the ever angry USA was predictable. The USA have been expelling diplomats and UN staff left and right over the years. It is also to be noted that in 1998 when the TPLF-EPRDF government expelled 30 officials, there was protest from the UN but no sound from the US or other foreign powers. The same is true in 2020 when Burundi expelled four UN functionaries. The indignation is also unproductive because Ethiopia or any other nation had the right to expel such officials under Article 9 of the Vienna Convention on Diplomatic Relations. UN staff has no mandate under any law in any country to undermine the government as these people have done. In general, the responses of the international community, notably the donor countries of the EU and the USA in the current conflict in Ethiopia have been a problem and have even prolonged the conflict. When a unilateral ceasefire was offered by the Ethiopian federal government on June 28, 2021, followed by its troops' withdrawal, the TPLF refused and mocked it. The federal army also left huge supplies including seeds for planting crops when they left Megale, the capital of Tigray. 
Ethiopia's federal government is willing to accommodate its Tigray region in an orderly manner while the TPLF be persuaded to return to democratic politics and eschew militarism and stop being accessory to the open conduit of Ethiopia's dismemberment and disintegration. Over now to trending, and I'm now joined in the studio by Biniam Alamayo. Welcome to the studio, Biniam. Thank you, Rumi. So, what's new? Uh, okay, thanks. Uh, the uh, as part of the uh, Great Diaspora Homecoming Homecoming Challenge, uh, the Ethiopian Airlines has just announced that it's going to start a daily flight uh, as of uh, next Monday to the historic town of uh, Lalibela. Uh, this is uh, ahead of uh, the uh, Diaspora Homecoming Challenge uh, schedule. Uh, for 7 to 9th of uh, January this year, where thousands of the diaspora are expected to flock uh, to the UNESCO registered town for the annual Ethiopian uh, Ghana or Christmas uh, festivity. Uh, so the flights are going to start uh, as of Monday and it's going to be uh, on a daily basis. Uh, it is to be recalled that uh, the uh, airport up in north, uh, Lalibala, uh, has just been uh, ravaged by the TPLF during its uh, months-long stay in the town. Uh, and so the Ethiopian had uh, discontinued uh, all flights uh, up north. But now that the rebuilding process uh, is well underway, Ethiopian feels confident that uh, it can s uh, start or resume flights uh, to that town. And this is by way of helping the diaspora access the town mm -hmm. uh, and uh, get there ahead of time. Uh, because it's going to be a big uh, celebration and in fact um, a show of solidarity for Ethiopians because uh, this was uh, a symbolic victory against the TPLF in the sense that while uh, looting and destruction took place uh, across the town, uh, that uh, heritage was left untouched. Okay. And, what, uh, what, does it take, what does it take, the resumption of the flight to Lalibala? Uh, it tells that uh, things are going well and that uh, slowly uh, the country is opening up uh, and uh, resuming to peace uh, and uh, stability. And also this uh, great diaspora homecoming challenge has schedules about 10 or uh, 11 events in all. Uh, we uh, announced uh, them uh, yesterday. Uh, for example, this Sunday th there's going to be the great Ethiopian uh, diaspora uh, challenge run. Uh, or mass rally okay. uh, to be organized at the, the Muscle Square. Okay. Uh, but the biggest of all uh, is expected to be up in north, uh, Lalibala, okay. where the Ethiopian uh, annual festivity of Ghana will be celebrated. Okay. Uh, and uh, before I sum up in another development, the okay. Ethiopian diaspora uh, have just announced their plans to uh, open up uh, a state-of-the-art dialysis center at the Menelik II referral hospital here in Addis Ababa and these uh, kinds of efforts are encouraged. So these are uh, the updates I have for the hour. Okay, thank you Biniam for the updates and okay. thank, thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Okay. Hey, my name is Saba. I came from Paris. In response to the invitation from the uh, Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed, we came with my family. Now we are visiting Ndoto Park, which is very exciting. We are having a very good experience. And Addis is very peaceful. Everybody should come and join and have this experience with all of us. Hello, this is Imabet Mangiste from Atlanta, Georgia. I am author of four books. I'm here in Addis Ababa, in a beautiful Addis Ababa. Please come and join us. This is uh, today I am in Toto Park. I have visited all the parks. It's beautiful. Hi, my name is Brooke Harley from London, England. Uh, I'm here to visit the country. So please come here. I'm, at the moment I'm in Toto Park. So come to peaceful Ethiopia. Bien, il faut venir, il faut nous rejoindre et visiter Addis. Merci. In a related development, the Swedish-born Pew and his Ethiopian wife are among those Ethiopian diaspora and friends of Ethiopia who returned home following the call of Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed for the Great Ethiopian Homecoming Challenge. Talking to ETV, Pew said the Western media outlets are portraying Ethiopia as unsafe place in their fake news campaign 
but we have seen how safe Addis is. Take a look. My name is Piu. I'm from Sweden. And uh, I'm married to uh, Ethiopian. Uh, my wife is Ethiopian. And we have uh, children together. And uh, she wants to go to Ethiopia because uh, my uh, stepmother uh, uh, and uh, my relatives live here too. So uh, I said, no, we can't go. It's a war in Ethiopia. And she said, no, it's not. So I said, look at the news. Look, CNN, BBC, Swedish news. It's a war. They say don't go to Ethiopia. But uh, she said, no, you can talk to my mother and you, you get the answer. So she talked to me and uh, yes, I say, okay, if it's safe, we go. And uh, I, I believe my wife. I, I know my wife, she's telling the truth, so we go. And uh, look, here's no war. I love Ethiopia, the weather is <laughs> nice and uh, I've been here eight times before. I see no difference. So uh, it was all fake news in every channel, Swedish, English, American. It's fake news and I, I don't know why, why they say it like this. So uh, I'm here now. So. <laughs> uh, I, I like it. He, very nice. It's safe and I don't know what they are talking about. I think uh, everyone should go to Ethiopia and uh, see this beautiful country. So uh, I, I suggest they, they go because here's, here's no war. I, I don't reckon. I, I don't see it. So. What are they talking about in the television? In the, <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know what to say. They, it's good. I love it. Ah, uh, we we bought uh, uh, soft clothes to to the military on the hospital. Uh, the because they they don't have enough. And we should buy some uh, medicine too if we find some. And uh, for the woman, uh, they need uh, trousers, and the man means uh, needs underwear uh, and thing. And uh, we we try to help both here in uh, Addis and uh, Debrecen. So we we must do something for the people. Bishoftu Town Administration announces that it has finalized preparation to host the homecoming diaspora community. According to the town mayor Alamayo Asafa, the diaspora communities do have the immense contribution in the fight against foreign pressure over Ethiopia. Kasaun Janni has more on that. Bishop to Town Administration announces that it has finalized preparations to undertake various hospitality activities to the homecoming diaspora community. Bishop to the tourism katamanage. Bishop is a town of tourism and economic center as well. There are more than 28 resorts and over 50 grand hotels. The mayor suggested that there is a stable peace and security in the town. Adding aside, there are various developmental activities being undertaken and the diaspora could be able to visit. We have already adjusted some selected places to be visited by the diaspora community. For instance, there are several lakes and developmental activities being undertaken around the lakes. Cognizant of the fact that, as the nation's huge industries are found in the town, we want the diaspora to visit this all when they come. The hotels and resort owners in the town own the part and the school dirt. The diaspora community are being served with reasonable and affordable prices and great discounts. We have widely prepared to the hospitality of the great diaspora to show the reality on the ground here in Ethiopia, as there are wrong narratives abroad. 
We are waiting for them to have great discounts in our services. Now various guests are being served. We have got a 25% discount on each service we give. Bishop is different from other towns, as there are wrong narratives by some foreigners about Ethiopia and with their slogan to leave Ethiopia citing the war, we are highly and devotedly working to show our peace, unity and the reality on the ground that could add a great value on our economy, politics and so on, which I strongly believe. The town administration also announced that it was ready to work together with the members of the diaspora community that might have keen interests to invest in the town. It's about 9 a.m. this morning. We're here at the most famous church here in Lalibela, St. George's Church, and you can see it down below. Merry Christmas. You are watching ETV News. Spokesperson of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs says cultural, economic and diplomatic issues remain at the center of Great Diaspora Homecoming Challenge. The spokesperson Dina Mufti highlighted the remark at the weekly press briefing here yesterday. Johannes van Town reports. The spokesperson presented issues which are trending related to Ethiopia. The ambassador mentioned the attainment of Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Foreign Affairs Demak Amakonnen at the welcoming ceremony of the Great Homecoming Challenge. It is to be recalled that Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Foreign Affairs appreciated Ethiopians in the diaspora for the contributions that impacted the lives of Ethiopians in economic, social and political arenas. And he is call on the homecomers to continue supporting rehabilitation and reconstruction efforts of the government. The homecoming challenge has begun. Yesterday the, it has been inaugurated by Deputy Prime Minister where he has expressed his gratitude for the diaspora, what they have been doing so far so as to support Ethiopia by uh, resisting against the pressure, undue pressure on the country uh, by different forces. Uh, he encouraged the diaspora also to be engaged in various uh, national uh, development activities, particularly in the reconstruction process, which will continue after uh, the uh, conflict that we have had due to the terrorist operations in the northern part of Ethiopia. Otherwise, there were various activities dubbed or organized for the diaspora. Uh, they, these were bazaars, visits to various development uh, sites, um, symposiums uh, like Pan-African Symposium, uh, organizing their visit to the regions as well, uh, particularly to the affected regions, regions affected by the war, and helping the family of the soldiers and uh, the affected people. Uh, there will be million march in city, blood donations, um, and uh, in general, uh, there will be various activities aimed at enhancing diaspora roles in the reconstruction process of the country. In addition, Ambassador Dina described the recognition of special representative of the Secretary General of United Nations mission in South Sudan for the hard work and dedication of the Ethiopian battalion in Tamura with regard to providing security to people of the South Sudan. As you know, we have uh, peacekeeping forces in, United, in, in Southern Sudan named UNMIS. The United Nations Secretary General has congratulated for their outstanding performance and they expressed his uh, appreciations uh, for their outstanding role in peacekeeping performance. 
Um, some Ethiopian embassies abroad have been doing their level best so as to promote uh, Ethiopian national interest. Uh, our embassy in South Sudan have engaged international and uh, domestic media. Uh, the ambassador briefed them on the current situation in the country and the uh, other pertinent issues. <clears throat> ambassador Dina also described the approval of the draft proclamation for the establishment of the Ethiopian National Dialogue Commission by the House of People's Representatives. The commission is established to discuss opinions and disagreements on the most fundamental national issues to legally institute a system that facilitates the national dialogue process and to establish an institution with widespread legitimacy that could coordinate and lead the deliberations capably and impartially. In another development, Marathon Motors Ethiopia has inaugurated electric vehicle charging station in Addis Ababa in the presence of high-level government officials. The company has also rolled out 20 electric-powered vehicles dubbed Hyundai Koina and Hyundai Ayong in the same inaugural ceremony. The vehicles cost up to 3.5 million per each. The electric cars being assembled by Marathon Motors locally are said to have a paramount importance to the country in saving hard currency and assisting the economy of the nation as well. Marathon Motors has announced plans to realizing 50% electric vehicle by 2023 and full electric power vehicle by 2025 in the country. Okay. Over now to a reminder of the headlines. Existential issues remain at the center of great Ethiopian diaspora homecoming challenge. Addis Ababa is safe contrary to Western media campaign against Ethiopia. You have been watching ETV News. Thanks for joining us and have a pleasant day.